I'm so excited you're here. If you guys are interested in seeing some Halloween slash fall DIY kits, then just keep watching. Okay, friends, we are going to start off with the Halloween tear tray. So if you guys have been around for any length of time, then you know one of my favorite DIYs to bring to you guys is every single season, Chalkator comes out with a seasonal kit. So obviously we are in spooky season slash fall. Now I did do a fall DIY kit last year. However, the fall kit for this year, they just brought it back from last year. So I knew that I wanted to show you guys the new Halloween kit. So each kit comes with the tear tray itself. Now we also have the top and bottom tray now. Instead of buying the entire tear tray kit, you can just buy the bottom and top tray to put with your hardware. That way you can just change it out for the season. But I actually had a kit in my stash, so I did just go ahead and pull out the top and the bottom. I put the hardware to the side, and then I gave the top and bottom tray a good coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint. Now I gave my trays a distress coat of paint, meaning that I did leave some of that white showing through. I also did flip them both over and paint the bottoms black as well, just to make sure that once it was set up, you couldn't see any of that white. But like I said, I did do a distress coat. If you do not like distressing, then you can totally skip this step because I also sanded down the edges to make it look old and weathered. I then repeated that step with the bottom tray. Originally, I was not going to paint the bottom of the bottom tray. However, as I was sanding and I was looking at the feet on the bottom, I realized that when it was set up that you could probably see the feet and see that they were white. So just for good measure, I did go ahead and paint that. Um, prior to painting it though, I got finished sanding it and then because it was so dusty i did just take a damp paper towel and i wiped my trays clean that way none of the dust was showing then like i said i went ahead and painted the bottom of the bottom tray and now it's time for the fun part so for the actual tiered tray they do have a tiered tray transfer now for some odd reason looking at the kit itself it does not come with the tear tray transfer so i will include that in the link that i leave for you guys with all of the products that i used in this video just in case you want to grab one for yourself they're super easy to put together they're amazingly fun like y'all i promise you squeegeeing on that paste to those transfers and then peeling it back to get your image I know I say it all the time, but I promise you it never gets old. So for the top of the tiered tray are obviously the little bats is the coordinating transfer. So it comes with half the tiered tray. It does also have the little circle in the middle. That way you can line it up perfectly. So you just transfer on one side, let that dry, and then you're going to flip it around and do the other side to complete the entire circle. Once I had the top done with my little bats, then I'm going to do the bottom with the spider web. And as I always say, the thing about Chalk Couture that is one of my favorite things, not only is it super beginner friendly and easy to do, but you can customize the colors and the patterns to suit your own decor. So once I had the bottom completely done and dried, now it's time to put the actual tear tray together. 
So like I said, it comes with all the hardware. You're gonna put the bolt up through the bottom. Then you're going to put the middle bar onto the bolt. You screw that down really well. And then you put the top tiered tray onto the middle bar and then you have the little handle at the top that you screw down so i set my actual tear tray aside and now we're going to do all the little decor for the tear tray so with the kit it comes with the tear tray essentials with which comes with a book stack a picture a mini cutting board a mini rolling pin and a mini board and base. So I start off by painting my little mini rolling pin with my Cashew Waverly chalk paint and setting that aside. Then I'm going to take this piece of, it's called Warbla, and if you don't know what this is, a lot of cosplayers, I think that's what they're called, cosplay, and they like create their own like costumes and stuff. They use the Warbla because when you heat it up, it gets very, very hard, but it is also flimsy before you heat it up. So I took my black piece of Warbla, and I will put this in my Amazon shop, and I painted a section of it with my Cashew Waverly chalk paint as well and set that aside to dry. Next, I'm going to take the handles of my mini rolling pin and I'm going to give that a good coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo Black Magic Stain. Set that aside. Then I painted my picture on the inside with my Ink Waverly Chalk Paint as well as the book stack. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Christmas tree shops, but I have a sister company of the Christmas tree shop called And That, and that's where I got this little cute little jar from. Yeah, cute. This little cute little jar. <laughs> Good Lord, help me. This little cute jar I got from the and that for $1.99. So I just took off the little string with, it had a little leaf embellishment on the string. I took that out, I took that off and painted it with my Ink Waverly chalk paint and set that aside. Then I cut apart all of the little transfers that come in the kit. And then I just lay out the transfers to the coordinating decor piece that I personally liked. And once again, customize this to suit your decor. If you do not like the little transfers that I chose, then you can totally do whatever ones that you personally like. So for the Warbla, I'm going to lay down my beware sign. It's in a coffin shape and I knew that I wanted to cut out this coffin and that's why I opted for this material and I just transfer that on with my black chalk paste. I also transfer on the cauldron as well as the background of the little skeleton kitty. Then once those were completely dry, I'm going to put Witch's Brew over the cauldron as well as the skeleton part of the cat over top of those transfers and then I transferred on that image with my white paste. Once they were completely dry, then I'm just going to go ahead and cut these pieces out. Now, like I said, this warbla is pretty thick, so trying to cut around all of these little details was not the easiest thing in the world. However, it did work. I was able to just kind of move the piece around and cut as best as I could. And then for the tiny little parts, I did take my Cricut scissors. They're super pointy and much easier to get into the small details. And then I just cut the rest of those pieces out. 
So once I was done cutting out all of those little pieces, I just set those aside and now I'm going to work on this little picture frame. So I just transferred on all of the little designs around the inside of the frame on the transfer with my white paste and then the bat and the wording on the inside, I transferred that on with my shimmer orange. Now sometimes with the little tiny details, it is kind of hard to get in those spaces with a regular squeegee. So we do have a detail tool in my chalk shop. I will also leave that in the link of all of the products used in this video. Please keep in mind that you can add and subtract from this cart as you wish. So if there's items in the cart that you don't want, you can just delete them out. Or if you would like to look what else is in the shop, that way while you're ordering, you can grab what you want. Then you can also add to your cart as well. And as always, y'all, if you want to get 40% off of everything in the chalk shop, you do have to become a designer. However, there, like you don't have to sell anything if you don't want. I do have a lot of people that just sign up for the discount and that is a 40% discount forever. There are other things that go along with it and you do get like $250 worth of stuff for $99 when you sign up. So that's a bonus plus a one-time 15% off coupon to be combined with the 40% off. So in my personal opinion, that's why I signed up to be a designer because I love it so much. I knew that it would be no problem to spend the quarterly minimum. Um, so that's why I personally signed up for Chalk Couture. You can also make money from it if you do choose to sell it, but again, you do not have to. So I will leave all of that information down in the description box below, even if you just wanted to sign up um, for the first time and then just grab what you needed and then, you know, let your designership lapse. That's totally up to you, but again, I'll leave that all down below for you guys. Okay, so as you saw, I did paint some of my cashew on the top and side of the book stack to make it look like pages and then I dry brushed all the way around the spots that I did not put um, lines of the cashew if that makes sense and then I also on the side where I'm going to put the wording I did just put some details like lines at the top and bottom and just kind of um, shaded the edges to again look like pages or the spine of a book I should say Next, I'm going to take the spider webs and I'm going to put that on the corner of the front of my book stack and transfer that on with my white chalk paste. Once that was completely dry, then I'm going to transfer on I Put a Spell on You to the front with my shimmer orange. I then flip my book stack over and I'm going to transfer on look what you made me brew to the side of my book stack. And because this had four lines on the actual transfer, I did just space out the wording and I put look what you made me in the middle and then brew at the end. I then transferred on a pumpkin to my mini board and base. I did the stem in my gold paste and then the actual pumpkin itself with my shimmer orange. And I promise you peeling back that transfer never gets old. So I set that one aside to dry and look how gorgeous that orange shimmer is once it's completely dry. But anyway, I lay down some more transfers. I laid down the Halloween on my little mini rolling pin and then I transfer that on with my black paste. I let the word Halloween dry and then I also transfer on the crow right above it. Let that dry as well. 
So I set that aside and then I'm going to go to the mini cutting board and there was this cute little kitty with some bats around the cat like kind of peeking over an edge. So I put that at the bottom of my mini cutting board and then right above it I transferred on creeping it real in my white paste with a skull right above that with my black paste. I then tied a piece of jute around the top handle of the cutting board and then I just made a simple finger bow and glued that to the middle and then I also painted the jute a little bit with my black paint added a little design under the wording and then I made a simple finger bow with some orange jute from Dollar Tree and added that to the side of my mini rolling pin next I'm just going to take that beware coffin and I'm going to glue it inside of a base from you can get these in my chalk shop again I'll leave that in the link for you guys so I just glue that down so that it wouldn't go anywhere because it is kind of thin it's thick material but it's also kind of thin at the same time so I wanted to make sure it didn't go anywhere so I glued that down Next, I'm just going to drill some holes at the top of my skeleton kitty as well as the cauldron. And then I took that leather ribbon from the jar that I got from and that and I strung that through. Now, this did not come with a cork. So I just took a cork off of a different bottle from Dollar Tree. It was a little bit too big. So I did just cut the edges so that way it would fit inside of my jar and then glued that down. And then I just wrapped the leather string around the neck of the jar with the witch's broom tied it in the back and then cut those off so that way you couldn't see the edges next i'm going to take this little jar from dollar tree now it had a wire hanger as well as a leaf hanging from the edge so i did take the leaf off of the wire and set that aside and then i strung the wire um through my cat I also set that aside because I wasn't really too sure what I was going to do with it just yet. Um, but as you could see that I did transfer on an image to that clear jar from Dollar Tree. And y'all, I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, y'all know I like to leave in my mistakes because I make a lot of mistakes. I'm real, I'm raw, I'm honest. And I like to show you guys that I am no perfect crafter. Um, and so I started to paint the inside of the jar, but my brush would not go all the way up the jar. So whatever, I just did the best I could. It didn't look bad. I mean, I wish I would have left it alone, but you live and you learn, right? So anyway, I set that aside. I painted that small jar with my cashew paint, just one coat, and then added the cat to the neck of the jar, obviously added the cork. And that was it for that little jar. And then last but not least, I took a bat off of the clips from Dollar Tree. I cut off the edge that went inside the clip and then added that to the bottom of my coffin little beware sign. And that was it for this project. Look how absolutely stunning this turned out. I freaking love this tear tray and all of the little decor. So let me know down in the comments which little decor piece was your favorite. I'm curious to hear. And also let me know if you guys will be grabbing this tear tray kit. You could also just go on the site and grab the transfers and then make your own tear tray and your own little um, decor pieces just because I used the chocotour pieces doesn't mean that you necessarily have to. You can totally use your own. So let me know what you guys think of DIY number one down below. friends welcome or welcome back i am so excited you're here if you are enjoying this video don't forget to share it out subscribe if you haven't already become part of my crafty family that way you don't miss any upcoming videos with that being said i love and appreciate y'all so much and let's jump back into today's video okay friends for the next kit we are going to do this trick-or-treat thorn sign and I love the fact that this one comes with step-by-step -step instructions. So I just take everything out of the package. It comes with the cork, the bats, the thumbtacks, 
um, double-sided tape for the thumbtacks to go on the back of the bats paste packets trays and a squeegee as well as the hangers for the back of the sign now you could hot glue this on this is a super lightweight sign however for good measure i did just go ahead and screw down the hanger in the back to start off then i'm going to flip my sign over i'm going to cut my transfer apart and i'm going to take the thorn halloween trick-or-treat part and i'm going to transfer that onto my cork sign with my black paste now i cannot stress to you enough how important it is to make sure that your transfer is smoothed down really nicely because as you can see at the bottom where it says enter if you dare it did bleed a little bit um, but it just is what it is there was nothing I could do to fix it on the cork board so I washed my transfer to make sure that I could use it again and then I'm just going to transfer on the glow in the dark paste to all of my bats I let those completely dry and then I flip them over and put the double sided tape on the back of the bats right in the middle and then I peel up the second part of the tape and stick down my thumbtacks. Once I was done sticking the thumbtacks down, then I'm just going to put those on my cork board. I didn't really have any rhyme or reason or specific spot that I was putting these on. Of course, y'all always know that I say place them where your eyes are happy. So I just placed them where I thought that it looked good. And that was it for this sign, y'all. It literally took me probably 10, 15 minutes to put this together. I absolutely love the way it turned out and wait till you guys see the glow. This chalk paste, or I should say the glow in the dark chalk paste, Y'all, it glows so amazingly, and I can't wait for you guys to grab a kit and try it out for yourself. For the next kit, we're going to do the pumpkin patch kit. Now, these are three fabric pumpkins, and this is actually our first ever ink chalk made kit. Um, for a really long time, we only had paste packets, and we now have ink packets, just so you guys know. Um, they do come, I believe, individually and then in packs. Don't quote me on that, but I do know for a really long time we never had ink in paste single packets but now we do so i'm super excited to share this ink kit with you guys so it comes with three pieces of fabric and then all of the pieces to put your pumpkins together it comes with the ink packets as well as once again the tray and the squeegee and for some reason i don't know why but i do believe that you have to purchase the transfers separately but like i said i will i will put all of the materials down below for you guys so i just take my ink mat these are a little bit sticky i lay my fabric down and then because I have jars of ink, I do pull out the jars of ink that I have coordinating with the uh, packets. Um, now, this did not come with the gold ink, but I just thought that the gold ink would look really good with these pumpkins. Um, in the kit, it comes with two different colors, so you would transfer on whatever color that you like. So I'm going to take the largest transfer and the largest piece of fabric, and I'm going to transfer that on with my orange peel ink, and then I just peel back that transfer, and then I blow dry dry my ink really well until it's completely dry and that is where the ink mat comes in handy because when you pull this up if you were just doing it on like a flat surface then the actual fabric piece would want to pull up so when you pull up your transfer and it is on the ink mat then it stays down really well so your image doesn't run together once i was done with the big transfer and the big piece of fabric then i'm going to use that same transfer and transfer that on to the smallest 
piece of fabric with my gold ink. When I peel back my transfer, I once again just make sure that that ink is super dry by blow drying it. For the middle piece of fabric, I'm going to take this gorgeous floral design and I'm going to transfer that on with my papaya paste, now, or my papaya ink. I thought I had a jar of this, but I could not find it anywhere. So I did just go ahead and use one of the, one. I keep wanting to say paste single. <laughs> Can you tell that we haven't had ink in the singles? I take my ink single, I put that out on the tray, and then I just transfer on that floral design with the gold as well on top of the papaya in certain spots, and then once again made sure that it was completely dry. Now this next part is the key to making sure that your ink is permanent. So if you're using it on cups, shirts, whatever the case may be, tote bags, you always want to make sure that you heat set your ink or else if you wash it or it gets wet, it will run. So I just hit that with my iron and a piece of parchment paper. And then once those were heat set so once i made them permanent now we're going to move on to the next step so these come with double-sided tape as well and you're going to put the coordinating piece to the seam of the fabric then you're just going to flip it face down and make sure to connect it with the finished side in the middle. If that makes no sense, then you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm really glad I'm doing this tutorial for you guys because when I was reading the directions, I was like, huh, wait, what? And then I figured it out. I was like, oh, okay, this is what they mean. So I'm really glad that this tutorial is here for you guys. That way you could follow along because I'm not going to lie, reading the directions, I was a little bit confused. So once I taped all of the fabric pieces together, then it says to bunch up the sides and use these clear rubber bands to close the bottom then you're just going to flip it right side out like a bowl the direction says and then you're going to take the stuffing it does come with three different size stuffing bags and you're just going to take the correct size bag and stuff your pumpkin and then once again pinch the edges to close it and then use another clear rubber band up at the top to um, ensure that it's not going to go anywhere. Next, I just close up the rest of the pumpkins the same exact way. Now, once you're done, the directions say to do what I'm doing here, but once you get to the end, then wrap the end around the stem of the pumpkin and then make a bow. Now, I found that these pieces of jute were long enough, but I just didn't like the way that that looked. So what I ended up doing was tying it at the bottom cutting off the excess and then grabbing some jute from Dollar Tree, cutting a piece, wrapping it around the stem, and then creating a bow with the extra jute. But once again, if you would like to wrap your jute around the stem from the original piece of jute, then you can totally do that. But I just personally think that it looks a lot better if you wrap it to the bottom, tie it tight, in a knot, cut off the excess, and then add your own piece of jute around the stem. Once again, I just complete all of those steps again with the other pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> 
and that was it for these gorgeous little pumpkins y'all I had so much fun doing an ink project I can't wait to hear what you guys think down below in the comment section and like I said before let me know which kit you guys will be doing and you will be DIYing along with me For the next DIY, we're going to do the vintage truck kit. Now, I want to start off by saying that you can mix and match. You can use your own transfers. You can use the transfers that come in the kit. It's totally up to you. I personally chose to use my own, and I wanted to have enough time to be able to show you guys using your own transfers like mixing and matching or using the ones in the kit however unfortunately I just didn't have enough time so maybe in a different video if you guys would like to see it I can show you what I come up with with the actual pieces in the kit um, but like I said I am going to do my own thing because I wanted it to match my Halloween decor and unfortunately in the new truck kit with the transfer the transfer did not have a Halloween transfer for it so I just came up with my own thing so in the kit it comes with four trucks and you can transfer on the front and the back and then it also comes up with the it also comes someday I'll be able to talk Lord help me um, it comes with the essentials kit so it comes with the block at the bottom for the wording and then the little truck piece in the back of the truck so that way you could have things again in the back of your truck so I start by taking out my truck pieces as well as the back of the truck and the block at the bottom I painted the block at the bottom with my ink Waverly chalk paint and then I transfer on the one side of the truck with my black chalk paste now this does come with two pieces to your truck and it is labeled um, one and two that way you know which piece to transfer on first um, and so for the bottom of my truck I used my shimmer black paste just because once again this is a Halloween truck and I thought that it would look really good so once I transferred on the second part of my truck let that completely dry then we're going to use this little skull that we used in the beginning with the tear tray kit and i'm going to transfer on that skull to my door once that was completely dry then i'm also going to take the image with the bat and the word scary and i transfer on the word scary with my white paste and the bat with my shimmer orange And I don't know about you, but I love this combo. I'm loving the way this truck is turning out so far. And then for the back of the truck piece, I'm going to take that little kitty with the bats. I thought it was just so cute with the kitty like peeking over the side of the truck. And then I'm just going to take the bats and I'm going to transfer them all over like around the cat. So once that was completely dry, I set that aside. And last but not least, I'm going to take my Fright This Way transfer. And I'm just going to transfer that wording on to the block at the bottom with my white paste. And once again, you can customize this whatever colors and combination that you personally like. But because most of my Halloween decor is the traditional black, white, orange colors, I did just stick with that color scheme. Now here is the transfer with all of the different wording and a different truck um, sunflowers and all kinds of different stuff but once again I chose to do the Halloween and that was it you guys look how gorgeous this turned out it matches perfectly with all of my other Halloween decor and I cannot get enough of this little 
spooky truck. So let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite. Let me know which kit you will be grabbing. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget to share this out. If nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You can literally do anything you set your mind to. Coming from an addict who is nine years sober, you guys, if I can do it, I know that you can do it as well. And if you guys are struggling, just know that tomorrow is a new day. With that being said, I love y'all so much. I always like to share with you guys that I just recently lost 80 pounds of fat and I put together a 21 page weight loss guide that is also linked down in the description box as well as a pinned comment. Or you can always text my number, the word guide on the screen and I will get that link over to you guys. With that being said, I love y'all from the bottom of my heart so much and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.